What's up, everybody? My name is Coalfire, and welcome to Finite. Now, this is uh, an entry for Ludum Dare 42, which the theme, again, is running out of space. Now, this is by Endeska. Still don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but uh, he is the developer behind Nikra, which I played a while ago and absolutely loved. I've been following him on Twitter for a while and uh, saw that he created this, which I've already gotten in and tested out. And it is pretty short, but that's fine because I absolutely love what's going on here because it deals with a couple of things that I absolutely love. Not things that I necessarily understand, but things that I love. And that is uh, particle physics and uh, astronomy. So what you do is you start out at like the Planck length, which I'm assuming the grid kind of represents uh, like a 2D representation of space time, you know, the, the fabric of the universe and all that. But you can click and drag and you can make an up quark which has a spin of plus two thirds. And then you can make a down quark, which has a spin of minus one third. And if you combine them correctly, so one up and two downs, they cancel each other out and they make a neutron. So you have two downs and an up. Yeah, there's your neutron. Oh shit, did that just decay into a proton? <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah, so if you if you have a neutron sitting by itself, it's not stable. And it will kick out an electron and uh become a proton. So if you look at like the the dent or the the mass of a a proton and a neutron a neutron is has slightly more mass than a proton and it's the difference is just like a uh an electron but since this thing decayed into a proton all on its own uh let's let's make ourselves another another neutron so this should give us hydrogen yeah, which, you know, technically hydrogen is just the the proton with the electron, but this would be, uh, what, deuterium? And then if we give it another neutron, then we get tritium. But it, it just decayed into the... Oh, this is, this is helium-3. Uh, this is normal helium, where you have two and two. Uh, wait, hold on. So we have we have uh two electrons running around here. Is this gonna do like electron shells too? So if I if I go up and oh my god, oh holy shit, it actually has electron shells. That's amazing. So it wants us to make carbon. So that's gonna be uh six protons and six neutrons. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me go back down to this level. Okay, so we've got yeah, two in this shell and then four in this shell. Oh my god. That's so cool. And the the four electrons in the valence shell is what makes carbon so unique, just like uh lithium because it can it can create four bonds, which makes it uh very very powerful in creating uh, complex molecules but then we start to get up to the atomic level or larger than that because we're making a star now what i didn't really understand is why we are doing a star out of carbon i get that you know we needed to go up a little bit in the like the hadron level in order to get to something that was a little bit bigger, but stars are typically just made out of um, helium and hydrogen, and it fuses the the hydrogen into helium, and then it cascades up towards you know lithium and beryllium and carbon uh, until finally it starts to reach iron, which when it reaches iron, uh, the the weird thing about fusion is that 
when you fuse these things together in in hotter and hotter situations, they they release energy. So two hydrogens, actually four hydrogens coming together to make a helium releases energy. And then uh, like a, a helium and a deuterium coming together to make lithium or uh, please don't take anything I say in this as fact. I am not a particle physicist. Uh, this is just like off the top of my head what I think I know. Um, but as it cascades upwards towards iron, when it hits iron, it starts to lose energy. So it starts putting energy into fusing iron and stars need that pressure from the energy that's being released to stay stable. So th there's this massive amount of gravity that's crushing down on it uh, from all of the mass that's there. And the only way that it doesn't collapse in on itself is via the amount of energy that's released. It's called light pressure. Uh, literally, the pressure of light pushing back out, keeping the star uh, from completely collapsing in on itself. But since iron takes energy to fuse, the light pressure starts to go down and it starts to collapse in on itself. And uh, so if we finish this off, there we have it. We have a star. So now we have to create a supernova. This one took me a little bit of time to figure out. Uh, and apparently what you're supposed to do is just crank it up. So this is increasing the pressure in the star. And sadly, the game doesn't go any further than this, which is a result of the 32-bit limit, which I don't understand anything about programming, but uh, the game literally ran out of space. So uh, I, I, <laughs> I think this just wins Ludum Dare. Uh, but so what happens when we when we reach that that star phase and go into a supernova is that you get this this weird pulsation of uh, of a star so what happens is you get um a, a lack of light pressure from from fusing iron so the star starts to collapse in on itself but that creates extra pressure which starts fusing more things so then it like bubbles back out and it cools off a little bit but then since the pressure drops again there's not enough light being produced so it collapses back in on itself and a star will go through this a couple of times until finally it reaches a certain point where the collapse creates a pressure that is so great that gravity can't hold it together and it explodes and that's what causes a supernova and because that final collapse is so great and so high pressure and there's so much energy it creates all of the different heavier elements that we see anything beyond iron is typically created by these supernova explosions because there's so much energy and so much fusion going on in the core of these stars and it's just I love seeing this shit represented in games and the fact that it goes all the way down from like the plank length where you're creating up and down quarks um, and then combining those quarks into hadrons and then the hadrons into atoms and it's just, it's so cool. And the fact that, like, how far can I go? Oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, <laughs> silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium. This is so cool. This is so cool. And look at that. The electron shells just keep going up. Like, so we've got our, what is it? S shell, P shell. God, it's been a long time since I took chemistry. But like, this is, this is so fucking cool. And the fact that like, it presents all of this, like really, really complex information in such a simple format. And like, sure, when you get further and further out, it becomes a little bit less accurate, but you know, who, who am I to judge that shit? This is fucking amazing.
oh, I get that this this wasn't like a conventional one of my videos. This was just me oogling over something that I really, really enjoy in game format. Uh, mm, if you've got the time, one of my favorite podcasts, which I've I've talked about them before, is Astronomy Cast. They talk about space, astronomy, uh, space news, telescopes, uh, the science community in general, everything down from from particle physics to uh, space time itself from the very small to the very big. And it's just, it's so informative. They've got like nearly 500 episodes. And if you want to learn just by listening, I highly recommend them. Um, but just, and holy shit, man, this is so cool. This is so cool. I would love to see this go further, uh, after, after the jam is over and just oh man i've got such a fucking nerd boner right now but this has been finite thank you so much for watching my name is cole fire and i will see you next time